What's going on everybody? Welcome to the video. Say hello to my 2020 Honda CB500R with ABS. I picked her up about three days ago in Concord, California from Contra Costa Motorsports. I traded in a 2019 Honda CB300R, which is their kind of, they call it Neo Sports Cafe. It's kind of like a uh, retro-ish naked bike, very much a beginner bike. Very fun, very light, very nimble, great for commuting in the city. Um, but the reason I traded it in because was because it just wasn't powerful enough for highway rides. And one of the main things that I wanted to get out of a motorcycle was seeing Northern California, all the beauty and all the, like the natural landscapes and the parks and the scenic drives. You know, they're, they're about a, an hour and a half two hours or even more than that from where I live in Sacramento and um, so feeling safe and capable on the highway and having enough power to you know get out of a situation and pass cars and just stay stay ahead of all the, uh, the idiots in cars you know that's important to me and I, I really just didn't feel that on the 300 so if you're a beginner rider trying to decide whether a 300 is right for you to begin on I think um, you really have to consider whether going on the highway for extended periods of time is important to you, right? Um, you'll see a lot of people who own 300s making videos on YouTube and they, they answer the question of whether or not 300 can go on the highway. And a lot of the videos I've seen, you know, people are like, yeah, it can go on the highway just fine. And, you know, that is and isn't true, you know what I mean? Like, yes, can it reach speeds 70, 75, 80 miles per hour? For sure. It'll even go higher than 80 miles per hour. But if you're trying to go from 75 to like, 85 on a 300 on my 300 at least it it would take a really long time you know like you're not passing anybody quickly at that speed and the, the engine is revving super high it just like sounds like you're kind of just like taxing and stressing the engine and you know depending on what kind of bike you have the, the 300r the cb300r it just wasn't made for for extended highway rides i mean that's apparent you know the way it rides even in the um the city, I'm just like shifting gears instantly, you know, one, two, three, four, just like, that's just city riding, you know, that's just like under 50 miles per hour riding, and uh, it does that really well, but on the highway, it just, it, it's just very underpowered, um, so anyways, on to the CBR500R, I think it's a great bike, I'm super happy with it, it's beautiful, it looks absolutely stunning, it looks like a super sport bike, but the way it rides, the power delivery, is very beginner friendly. Um, it's not going to throw you off the bike. It's going to be relatively forgiving. I would say even completely forgiving. Um, it's just it has the power and the acceleration, but it's not crazy, right? It's not like a super sport bike. It's definitely not a 600, 650 class bike. It's just. I think it's just a more powered beginner bike is how I would look at it. And I am someone who is a complete beginner. I started riding in January of this year, so that's January 2020. And, you know, I'm not the kind of guy who's like super into like motorsports. I've done jet skis, I've done ATVs and all that stuff. But I mean, like, it's not really second nature to me. When I first got on a bike, it was still pretty intimidating. Um, even when I moved up from the 300 to the 500, it was intimidating because I will say this, in a, in a way that the 500 is not quite so beginner friendly is this it's kind of a full size full weight bike right in some cases i think it's even a little heavier than than 650 class bikes um, but as far as the size it's generally going to be the same size um, and weight as a 650 so that can be a little intimidating especially for me i'm 5'8 135 pounds you know i'm a small guy um, the seat height, fortunately, on the 500R, 30.9, that's that's pretty cool. Like, it's pretty low. It's even lower than that 300 uh, bike that I had before. So my uh, my foot finds the ground relatively fast, uh, coming to a stop. So that, that builds a little bit of confidence, um, you know, doing slow speed maneuvers and stuff like that. But, you know, just riding it around the city so far, just commuting is... Mainly, I'm going to use this bike for commuting, you know. I'm going to, you know, use it to get around and see places and have fun on the weekends. But commuting during um, the week and it's been absolutely great um, when I'm riding through the city I can stay in second gear all day long and that's just it's much less stressful than the 300 like having to sh constantly shift gears all the time that might be your thing you know it is fun shifting gears you, you you might get bored not shifting gears you know if you're riding around but 
for me, um, with all these stop signs and stop lights and just like people walking and dogs and bikes, it's just like, it's, it's cool to just be able to chill in second gear and not feel like the bike is like really like lurching or like, you know, really wants to be in a different gear or the engine braking is like really crazy. I'm just cruising it and just like enjoying myself in second gear around the city. Um, so that's real cool. And then of course I have the passing power if I want to just gun it and, you know, fly, fly by and weave through traffic responsibly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, but the sound of the bike is great. Um, it's like this low rumble. It makes this like cool kind of like throaty, grumbly sound when like I let go of the gas in second gear and that's really cool. Almost like a little burpy kind of sound. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not technical because I'm super not, guys. So if you're watching this video, I guess this is mainly for people who are absolute beginners like me. Um, trying to decide what kind of bike they get or they just want to try to consume some content regarding the 2020 CB500R. I felt like there needed to be some more of that and you know, I felt like I could, I could throw something out there since I, since I bought one. Um, so we talked about the sound, the looks. The riding position is a little more aggressive. It's definitely more aggressive than pretty much my 300, which was virtually completely upright. Completely upright is so nice because it's, it's just easy on the body, right? It's easy to just like be really weightless on the handlebars and just kind of steer the bike really, really easily. And, and the, the CB300R had like dedicated handlebars that sat above the forks, so it, it felt much better and easier to control. With, with the sport bikes, it's, they're like clipped on actually to the forks. Um, so it's not a true handlebar, you're just like directly manipulating the forks. And I have to remember to be conscious about making good posture, making sure my back is straight, making sure my core is always engaged. You know, it's easy to get lazy. And when I get lazy, then I'm leaning forward and my arms are pretty much completely straight and all my weight is resting on top of the handlebars on my hands and my wrists. Not only is that super uncomfortable after like a very short amount of time, but it makes the bike a lot more harder to control because when I, when I do my steering inputs, instead of like lightly just pushing forward on the handlebars, my weight is actually pretty much on top of the handlebars. And it just, it makes the bike almost unresponsive to the inputs that you put in. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. You have to be mindful of your posture on this bike. Um, it's not super crazy. I will say it's not like a super lean. It's definitely good enough to commute every day in, but you, you will have to be mindful of your, of your posture or else it's, it's gonna suck. Um, so that the seat is very comfortable. Um, the mirrors I have no problem with. Brakes, they're not, the front brake doesn't seem as great. It doesn't feel as good as my 300. My 300 felt very smooth and grippy. This one, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like it's, it engages as smoothly. But I mean, as far as stopping power, I guess it's, it's relatively the same. Shifting feels amazing. The throttle feels amazing. The sound, it just, it feels like I moved up to a luxury vehicle. It feels like this 300 was cheaply made, and it wasn't. You know, it's a good, it was a good, great bike. I bought it brand new, and but it was just like the parts were lighter and kind of a cheaper feeling. When I shifted gears on the 300, I, I could barely tell sometimes. You know, there wasn't that tactile feedback, and like all the levers were kind of light and dinky, and you hear this like the chain like rattling when you when you rode. It just had overall kind of like a little clickety clackety feel to it. And the uh, 500 is much more refined. Like shifting feels strong and robust. And, like, it just feels so much better. Like everything feels, sounds, and looks so much better on the 500. Uh, it's got this really cool modern dash. I don't know if it's LED or LCD, um, but it's really easy to read. Uh, the tachometer is really cool. It has a gear indicator, which is like right there for you to see. Um, so you don't have to like, keep tabs in your head about what gear you're in, so that's very nice. As far as features, it's kind of bare bones there. It doesn't have anything like, kind of like very traction control or anything like that, but you know, for the price, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, if you, if you want to move up to the 650, you're paying like $10,000 new at least. That's MSRP, so you're probably looking at like $12,000, you know, for a Honda Super Sport. Um, but this is kind of middle of the road. The price was um, very fair, you know, MSRP about 7,000. And yeah, I think, if you're a beginner and you know you feel confident in, in the bigger size of the bike, um, that's I think you should go for it. Um, and I think that's the only real consideration because you shouldn't be scared about the power. I think that anybody who tries to tell you that the CBR 500R is too powerful for a beginner, I think that I don't necessarily agree with that unless you're someone who's like really really conservative, someone who's maybe like 
not only never been on a motorcycle before, but if you are someone who's like, if you haven't even ridden a bike since you were like five years old, you know, if you have never done motorsports before, if this whole thing kind of intimidates you, if you've never driven a manual transmission car before, a stick shift car, and it's all like super new to you and it does kind of freak you out, you know, then yeah, maybe maybe the 500 isn't the best choice for you, especially not new, right? Like maybe maybe look for something used or something 300. Um, if you if you feel like you know, just be honest with yourself. You know, if you feel like you really need that extra confidence and you definitely rather play it safe than sorry, go for the 300. You know what I mean? Like you know, don't risk it. Learn on the 300. You will build extraordinary amounts of confidence on the 300. The way you can flick that thing like a bicycle, pretty much, man. And you know you don't even have to you won't even have to think about it for a while. Before you know it, you're just gonna be like zooming around town and just like passing cars, just having a blast on the 300, right? Um, so if you feel like you're gonna need that confidence, I feel like you should start with 300. But if you're like all right with it, you know if you if you feel like you're not very intimidated by it, maybe it is it is your first motorcycle. But you know if you if you've done maybe dirt bikes in the past or you know ridden power sports vehicles and it's just you're okay with that, then I think the 500 is a, is a solid choice. Even a used 500, I think there's a great market for that. And uh, I think there will be a little more room to grow into. Um, you know, if you, <laughs> a lot of people move up, you know, move up, move up, move up. So, you know, I don't want to rule that out because honestly, when I bought my 300, I was like, you know what, I'm get, this is going to be good enough. Before I even like rode it 1,500 miles, um, which is how much I put on it before I sold it, I was just like, nah, it's not gonna, I'm not going to grow out of it. It'll be fine. And then, you know, in, in the city, it was. It was super fun. And just, like, weaving, just, like, you know, moving side to side on that bike. Like, it was nothing because it was so light. And then I took it on the highway, and I was just like, wow, I don't feel safe. This sucks. Like, this absolutely sucks. How am I going to get to Tahoe on this bike? Like, that's going to suck. Nowadays, like, cars fly on the highway, right? 7580, like, in, on some highways isn't even considered fast. That's, like, the norm on some highways. And when you're, when you're like pushing 75 and the engine's like all revved out and you don't have any passing power and cars are like flying past you um, and then the cars that are behind you are like why is this dude going so slow and then they like you know they d dip out the lane and like pass you really fast like I don't feel safe when that happens and I don't feel safe when I have no options like that on the highway so that's why I moved up to the 500 which has plenty of power for the highway plenty of power for street riding so yeah guys that's all I have to say about this um, I hope I wasn't rambling too much. This was a voiceover. I don't have a moto vlogging setup. I don't think I'm going to do a moto vlogging setup because I'm not that interested in doing that. But I did just want to put out some content for people who are trying to consume as much CBR 500 content as possible. I know I was when I was looking to buy it. So yeah, if you have any questions or comments, just shoot them below and um, I'll definitely be getting to them since I have zero subscribers. Thank you again, guys. Thank you so much. Everybody stay safe during this crazy time. COVID-19 survivors, holla.